Well, I have the unenviable task this morning of following Dr. Lowell Catlett on the program. I used to think I was Alan's favorite entity president until I saw the order of the program this morning. But then after watching John unveil the plaques earlier, I think I'm up at least one compared to where I was previously. But Dr. Catlett's a great person to have on a program like this, and not just because of the gestures, but sometimes how we all feel about new technology coming our way. I heard Dr. Catlett speak the last time about a year ago. I was on a program in North Carolina, a biotechnology conference, and I was on a panel talking about the impact of genomics on the efficiency of the beef industry. The next panel, about 30 minutes later, sitting at the same table I was at, there was a speaker talking about how his company had developed all the technology necessary to make milk for human consumption from bovine cells in his lab. That makes us all grab our head a little bit and think about that. This technology is coming at us at a faster rate. We understand that change is going to happen. And I've always thought that the best way to deal with change is to study our history, to look back in time. This particular brochure sits in my office. I lay that out. Visitors come look at it. I look through it from time to time to remind us of the history and where we've been in this organization and the decisions that we've made and the direction that we've taken guided by our membership that's led to our success today. In the time that brochure was printed, performance programs were somewhat a controversial idea. There were some that would have espoused in those days that everything you need to know about a cow, you can tell by looking at him with a trained eye. Yet the association moved largely in a direction of objective evaluation, weights and measures, ratios, contemporary grouping, those sort of things. And that decision, along with lots of others, set us up for the, for the success that we enjoy today. Next year, we'll celebrate 40 years of the Certified Angus Beef Program and all the success that that represents. I didn't really think about it until I started putting these slides together, but this year's the 10th anniversary of AGI. And just like all of the, the things that we've been a part of, I don't know that our founders fully realized what the opportunities would be, but they laid the groundwork that led to the Angus breed success when they made that decision. Originally, it was about bringing the genetic evaluation of the Angus breed in-house from the university that were really moving in other directions in terms of the research programs. But AGI then grew into this whole area of genomic testing, providing services to the breeders, but it charted a course for our own success where we have a company that's here to serve you. AGI is about people, and I'm lucky to work with a very talented group of people that work for you every day whether it's the folks in the top row, the customer service folks that answer the phones, take your questions, scan all those samples. Last month they scanned, scanned 15,000 DNA samples through, our, through to the labs and an equivalent number back into our archives. Working out your parentage problems, all those things, providing the service that you need to take advantage of this technology. Second row, a couple of people you'll hear from later this morning, in my opinion, the best research and education team in the beef genetics industry. Not just to compared to other breed societies, but certainly compared to a lot of the universities in our country as well. And the folks on the bottom row are information systems team, the ones that work with genetic evaluation, including yes, Marg that we recognized earlier. Those folks are the ones that actually make it happen. They put our ideas into action. They give you the tools that you need so that we have a reliable evaluation that's weekly, still a unique feature in the beef industry and as reliable and predictable a system as possible. One of the things that's unique about our company compared to other players in this space is that we're your company. We're governed by you. We're governed by the directors of the AGI board, which are the folks that you elected, folks that are Angus breeders themselves, folks that write the checks for the DNA test, folks that use the EPDs that come out every week. They're our check on our direction, and they provide guidance to us in terms of the way we can best serve you. One of the changes that we saw this year in, in it with AGI was the adoption of the new single step technology. First time I ever got a question about single step, I think was in, in the summer of 2014. It's actually when I was interviewing for this job, and I can't remember if it came from Don or Kevin, but that technology was already being discussed. And the first, bo first board meeting I went to, two weeks into my new job, Single step was already on the agenda. Folks from the University of Georgia were coming to talk about the technology. 
I'd already heard some about it from some of my friends and colleagues that work in the genetics of other species, but it took some time to get it in a position where it was gonna be beneficial to the Angus breed and to add all the features and attributes we needed for our weekly evaluation. That came to pass this summer after a lot of testing, a lot of evaluation, some of it internal, where we pulled back the last two years of data, ran EPDs every which different way, using old and new technology, including this, and seeing which one predicted your data that came next more accurately. As you can guess, single step was consistently the best across all traits. This is a paper uh, from Larry Keene at the Meat Animal Research Center in Clay Center, Nebraska. Larry's a valued advisor to AGI, and, and in some ways, he's the second opinion in the room when the AGI board meets. You've got folks like Steve and Kelly and I, but you've got Larry from the outside, a world-renowned geneticist that gives us guiding and feedback on the programs and the services that we give to you. And Larry did an independent evaluation as well with Clay Center data, data that's not in our existing database. And again, in their evaluation, they found that single step was the most successful and most accurate way to evaluate cattle. But we continue to evaluate, we continue to study to better understand what this technology is doing and how well it's working for you. One of the things that, that Angus breeders do every spring and fall, depending on your calving season, is look about how bulls have changed when their first daughters come into production. That's when we see the biggest change in milk EPDs typically, when those daughters' first records come into production, and so we add a significant amount of accuracy to their milk EPDs. While you're evaluating bulls, we're evaluating the technology, because the promise of the technology is that we can evaluate animals in an accurate manner before they generate those progeny records. So I went back and looked to see how much bulls had changed back in 2015 under calibration four. And we saw that the average Angus bull that added his daughters, his first daughters, in the evaluation during that fall period from June to this time of the year changed on average plus or minus about four and a half pounds. Not perfect, not too bad. We looked at fall 2016 and we saw very similar results. We'd added new data, we'd updated the calibration. We didn't really change the accuracy, it didn't get better or worse, but our prediction power was about the same as what it was. When we look at this fall with single step, we see about half as much change. The bulls that generate significant amounts of, da of daughter records this fall for the first time changed half as much in milk EPD as they had previously. And I've, I, I evaluate that as a success because we are more accurately predicting progeny performance. It's the same if you look at carcass traits. Bulls that have the first actual carcass records come into the evaluation, a significant enough number of records to significantly increase their accuracy. Again, in 2014, we saw marbling EPDs change about a tenth of a unit. Again, as you'd expect some change as that significant amount of data comes in. Fall 2016, a little bit better. But this fall with single step, we saw a greater reduction in change, an increased amount of accuracy, more consistent results from this evaluation than what we had previously. Ribeye is the same story. Uh, is actually, calibration five, the next one, they actually changed a little bit, probably plus or minus, not a lot of difference there. But in single step, we see less change. And as we look at carcass weight, from about an eight pound change on average when bulls from the old calibration four system in 2015, in 2016, we saw a slight reduction to about six and a half pounds and now less than five in terms of, of the average change. Keep in mind that's working with single step, which is a system where the genomics actually update week to week. Those old systems, the genomics would have been exactly the same from the beginning to the end. But by updating the genomics weekly, we have a more accurate evaluation. We make use of all that information as soon as it's presented. There's a number of other projects that AGI is working on at the current time. Uh, that, again, things that you as breeders have asked us to work on, things that you say are important to the Angus breed, and those are things you'll be seeing coming out hopefully in the next year or two. One of our highest priorities for genetic evaluation is foot structure. One of the first things that, that we did when I started with the organization, based on input from the, from the board of directors, was develop a scoring system. And many of you have been faithfully submitting data on foot structure. This summer, the AGI team presented an abstract at the National Animal Science meetings with a preliminary analysis of that data, and, and soon we'll be incorporating genomics with our goal to release that by the first of the year or shortly thereafter. That won't be a full EPD run for every animal in the population. 
It'll be a research report, it's been, it's been done in the past. But that'll allow for some selection on proven sires that have significant numbers of progeny data for this important trait. That we'll provide that out for feedback, and I know you'll give us feedback. And based on that, we'll adjust the evaluation to make it more accurate and more useful, and ultimately it'll become a regular part of the Angus genetic evaluation. Another trait that we look at, that we've been looking at for a period of time, is altitude tolerance, or PAP. Certainly something very important for those of you that sell bulls into the high country. We've been working with Colorado State on a research project funded by the Angus Foundation for the last couple of years, and that project is wrapping up. We're also able to combine the data that we've collected through your submissions, along with data that's collected by Colorado State at their research center to produce a prototype EPD for PAP including genomics, and again, we hope to produce that in the first quarter of next year. Another trait that we're working on that we've got a lot of feedback from members that they're interested in is tenderness. We understand that tenderness is a key component of consumer satisfaction with beef. As John Sicka said yesterday in a, in, a, in a meeting, Angus already occupies the high ground for tenderness. It's the breed strength that always has been. I'm not aware of any serious study that didn't show Angus to be superior for tenderness. Yeah, we want to keep in mind that the bulls that we're using in each generation are at least in the top two-thirds or three-quarters of tenderness that we're not creating a problem unintentionally by selection. It's something we want to monitor and pay attention to because we know it's so important to our consumers. Hair shedding is another one. A few in the room and maybe were part of a hair shedding project that was funded by the Angus Foundation. And whether you're ranching in the southern part of the U.S., Maybe you're in fescue country and want to put some selection pressure on hair shedding for fescue tolerance, or maybe you're looking for export opportunities in Central and South America. We know that we can identify Angus genetics that are more adapted to those hotter climates because they do consistently shed their hair. It's actually a quite heritable trait. So again, that's something that we hope in the next year to produce uh, a prototype EPD on bulls that have been part of that project to bring that information to you. And finally, cow longevity one that a lot of us have our minds on. Many of you are participating in Maternal Plus, and we would encourage more of you to be part of that program. Uh, Kelly Ritalik and other members of our team have made some upgrades to the interface with Maternal Plus to make it more user-friendly uh, than it was in past years. We'd encourage you to look at that because we know the economic importance of a trait like that to folks buying Angus bulls for their breeding programs is highly significant. So those are things to look forward to in, in AGI, and we welcome your feedback. Tell us other things that we should be looking at. Tell us about other things that are important to your business, ways that you can be more successful and we can help your customers be more successful with Angus Genetics. There's more technology coming, more things down the pike, a number of things that, that you may not be thinking about, we're thinking about, we're listening, we're trying to pay attention to what's happening in the broader industry. One of the exciting projects that we're thinking about a little bit, uh, some of you see that, that dairy cow in the bottom corner, she's wearing a collar. Some of you have seen that it's been used some in dairy cattle management. It's got not only GPS, solar panel to, to charge it, it's got accelerometers, kind of like those trailer brake controllers that some of you have in your pickups. It senses position. It can sense the position of that cow, it can sense whether she's up or she's down, she's moving or not. It's a good indicator of her health. The steer that I pictured there, well, that's a picture I took when I was in Australia this summer, uh, speaking at the Australian Angus Conference. We went to a research center there. They're using a similar technology to measure grazing cattle intake consumption. Think about that for a little bit. The opportunity to understand grazing animal consumption. How does that impact your commercial customers? If we can improve productivity of cattle, if we can improve uh, the, the efficiency of cattle, improve stocking rate perhaps, and at the same time, take good care of our pastures and rangelands for the future. I don't know if that technology will be the game changer or not. We're studying it, we're paying attention. There's other exciting technologies in the health area, the ability to measure immunity without the cattle actually becoming sick. That's pretty exciting as well. And so all those things are out there. We're paying attention, we're representing your interests, trying to position the Angus breed uh, for success in the future. The technology that we'll talk about more today, though, is a new product called Angus GS. Some of you have heard about that a little bit. We'll talk about that later in the panel. But to introduce Angus GS, I'd like to turn over to uh, my friend, Dr. Steve Miller, one of the architects of the Angus GS product. How many genomic profile tests have been designed specifically for Angus cattle? 
There's only one profile created specifically for Angus cattle, and that's Angus GS. Created at Angus Genetics, it's based purely on Angus DNA. Angus GS will have better predictability and deliver more power and accuracy than any previous genomic profile ever. And I know because I designed it that way. For Angus, by Angus. Angus GS. Angus GS is a result of a collaboration between AGI and GeneSeq Neogen. It's a product that, that was just the natural evolution of where AGI started. Ag Angus being a bigger part of your future, designing products that are ultimately there to help you succeed and be more successful in your cattle pr production. I'd like to next welcome to the stage Dr. Stuart Bach. Stuart is the Vice President of Agrogenomics for Neogen GeneSeq Operations in Lincoln, Nebraska. Stuart, thanks for being with us today. Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, uh, it's a real pleasure for us to be back here today, uh, year three of the International Genomics Symposium. And uh, some of you that were here last year, I recounted a bit of my history. I've been doing this beef genomics thing since 2003, so it's, it's been nearly 15 years, and I can't tell you how happy I am to be here today uh, sharing this historic event with you. We're here to talk about uh, Angus GS, the new standard in genetic testing for Angus cattle. It's a powerful new tool for you, the Angus breeders. As Steve mentioned, it's designed for the Angus breed, leveraging the power of the database that you as members have built over the last 10 years. More power, more accuracy, and more value for your genotyping dollar. So this is a very interesting moment in history for you. Three important elements are converging. You have a better genetic evaluation, as Dan described for you. You have a new 50,000 SNP chip that is specific for your breed. And you have a tremendous opportunity to drive your own future forward. These three pillars will support the ongoing success story that is Angus. First of these, is the, uh, is the new evaluation. I'm old enough to have been at the BIF meeting in Calgary in 2008. And at the time we were just starting to do genetic evaluations and we we're bringing genomic information in. And we thought, well, we have to treat genomics the way we do a correlated trait, just like ultrasound. So we brought it in that way. And it was good and it was effective, but it was cumbersome. And over the last 10 years, a lot of really smart people have participated in the evaluation of new methodologies that will improve the way we evaluate cattle. From our vantage point, where we see at GeneSeq, some of the very best and the very brightest around the world are embracing this technology. You're truly blessed to have a talented team at AGI that are among the best in the world in the science and gen of, of, of genetic evaluations. We know these things because we work with some of the genomics experts around the world on a daily basis. And with the single step method, you are ready to move into the new era. But these things don't happen by accident. You have to congratulate the leadership of your organization. People make these things happen. The Angus GS is a pillar of your success. It is a full 50,000 SNPs of Angus content saturated with genetic markers that are specific for your breed. It's enhanced with priority content for the future discoveries in areas of fertility, feed efficiency, meat quality, plus long-range benefits in animal health and adaptation to the environment. This is a product for the new generation. But the next piece of this is you as the breeder. The irony is, is that the smarter we get about doing genomics and, uh, and genetic technologies, the more we begin to realize that the real power is in the phenotypes that you capture every day on your operation. This is where you come in. Your commitment to collect quality data will allow you to take the greatest advantage of these tools. If you collect and report reliable phenotypes for all of the available traits, the Angus GS is more than a genotyping chip for you. It is a new business opportunity for your breed. Combining your, the, the data collection with the genetic evaluations, and you will begin to distance yourself from the rest of the pack to an even greater extent. 
What happens when you use genomic selection on both sides of the pedigree? You get faster progress. You enhance your ability to collect maternal performance, empowering decisions that improve fertility and production. Strategic decisions at lower cost allow us to penetrate deeper into the herd for the genetic evaluation and accelerate genetic progress in key traits. And at GeneSeq, we're proud to partner with the American Angus Association to, uh, to bring this technology to you. I oftentimes tell people we're just a little tiny genotyping outfit from Lincoln, Nebraska. And we're blessed to have grown and gotten uh, bigger in ways that matter, matter a lot to you. We're proud to be part of the bright future you have in the association. So a little bit about who we are. Every day we process in excess of 10,000 DNA samples in the world's largest animal genomics testing facility. That volume supports innovation, robotics, Lowell mentioned that. It supports automation, advanced informatics, and growth in the expertise of our scientists. We pride ourselves in being in the heart of cattle country too. We oftentimes tell you if you're going down I-80 through Lincoln and you want to stop and see a genomics uh, facility at work, come and see us. Like you, there are three pillars to our success. We concentrate on three things. Number one, high quality data. We generate 250 million genotypes. It's not, what did Lowell said? 2.5 quintillion? It's not that, but it's still a lot. We generate almost 7 billion genotypes a month and over 85 billion genotypes a year. From serving, the individual, uh, from serving the individual breeder to helping large food companies pinpoint the source and uh, an identity of food, food spoilage organisms, we are there in the agricultural sector. The second pillar of success is fast turnaround time. That means innovation in how we manage your samples and how we get DNA, how robotics move faster and enhance data, and how we utilize information technology. Lowell mentioned it took 13 years and $2.7 billion to sequence the human genome. Nowadays, we can do that in a week and for under $1,000 using one of the machines in our offices. The third pillar of that is fair pricing. Fair pricing a lot means we can leverage our expertise and pass those savings on to you. The cost of genomics has come down rapidly in the last decade. The amount of information we delivered has increased exponentially. But the value is in giving you, the Angus breeder, a full 50,000 SNP genotyping array built for your breed so you can use it on your whole herd in your applications. We also partner with other people. Groups like AllFlex are responsible. The enabling technologies of the AllFlex TSU have many advantages. You can use TSUs to do in seconds what previously took much more time and hassle. I always tell people, Send me a bad sample and I'll send you a bad result. Work with us to get a good sample and you'll get high quality data with rapid turnaround time and fair prices. What a concept. We also are present around the world with you. If anybody recognizes that guy, I need a woo-hoo. Otherwise, I'm going to uh, evaluate his uh, employment uh, contract on Monday. That's Rick Fortmiller covering Kansas and Nebraska. But we're there with you around the world. The American Angus Association provides global leadership for the breed, and the Angus GS is a testament to that strong and dynamic direction for the benefit of Angus breeders and your customers around the globe. Well, we're also about innovation. We are constantly innovating, whether it be in the evolution of the new GGPF250 with over 250,000 markers for causative mutations, identifying key traits such as fertility, as well as genotyping of embryos to accelerate genetic improvement. This is what we do. This is our business. And it's a great source of pride with the, that we work with the, brightest, the best and the brightest across the globe. Our customers and partners serve agriculture, helping feed the world every day, and we are grateful to be part of that mission. But we're also about the future. Lowell talked about that as well. We believe in the future of beef genomics. We have hundreds of visitors like these kids that come and see us every month. 
I tell people I'm older than DNA. I was born before Watson and Crick had discovered this stuff, but these kids, what they will do with it is incredibly exciting and we're blessed to be a part of that. Finally, we're committed to your success. We've invested in education, product development and support, and we are very pleased to be part of your future. Thank you very much for a chance to share a few comments and, uh, and we'll be talking with you more about Angus GS.